Hey what's up, in this video we're going to be carrying on with our Reddit app. In the last video we just managed to get the RSS data into our, our log and now we're ready to figure out what we're, going to, what we're going to do with it. So down at the bottom here we have all of our information coming from the RSS feed. Well we have some of the information, remember the log isn't going to show all the information even though your app will actually be able to grab it all. So let's actually go over to our code beautifier and take a better look at what we're dealing with here. So if we look at the RSS feed, really what we're interested in is we, we want to get the author. Um, we don't really care about the category. We, inside this content tag, there's a ton of information, so we're going to want that. And we want the updated tag. Oh, and title. Title is definitely something we want. So getting things inside author is easy because we can just use our getter and setter methods because you'll notice here that these, these tags actually close and then there's data inside it and then and then it, sorry, the tag opens and then there's data inside it and then it closes. And it's the same with the URI, same with updated and the same with title. But content's a little different. It actually specifies a type, it specif specifies an HTML type. And then inside here, there's kind of like a weird looking format. So this isn't gonna be easy to parse. This is gonna be very difficult to parse. We're actually gonna have to make a custom method that's gonna be able to extract that information. Here, I'll pull up a notepad file. Because if, if the data is like, let's say some tag, and then you close some tag, anything, so I'll we'll just put some information, anything inside of these tags is really easy to get. We can straight up just use getter and setter methods and actually retrieve that information. But if you have um, like another tag, and if there's information inside this area, like like for example, in here, you can see we have these ahrefs. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, this this um, and lt with a semicolon, this will actually render in HTML to be um, a tag like that. And if we look at this and gt semicolon, this that will render in HTML like that. So these are actually tags in here. So um, the kind of the hard part about this is going to be we have our content tag and then it closes here. But then inside it, we actually have other tags that will be rendered once once Android gets them. So, like for example, this this right here. I'll just copy that. This right here will actually be a href. That's what it will be rendered as. Anyway, so it, it's going to be tough because the only way we can get information easily is if you have some tag and then it closes and you have some information in here and then the tag closes over here. But in this case, you actually have an open tag and you have some information here and then the tag closes later on. So it'll be it'll be it'll look like that. Whereas we're not actually interested in the information that's in here. I'll just put data. We actually want this information. So it's going to be more difficult to get. So hopefully that makes sense, but I'll, I'll illustrate it another way here. So I'll grab this whole content section here, and we're going to go to the uh, code beautifier, and we're going to go into the HTML viewer. So let's stick this in here, and let's actually only select what's inside the content tags, because this is what it, this is what Android's going to get. We're going to select everything inside of the content tag. So just cut that out, and then paste it back in over top of the content. So now this is what Android is going to see inside the content tags. So if we go to our Reddit app, so here we have all of our content. You can see that the table tag starts here and it goes all the way down to here. So this is what's gonna be inside of content. So we need to figure out a way to parse this and it's not going to be easy because the information actually isn't inside tags. It's inside, uh, what is it called? It's called C data. So in, if it's inside the tag, like this information right here, this is called C data. It's um, like exactly how it sounds. C data. That's what it's called. So we're trying to get the C data out of there. All right, let's go back to our beautifier. And now, so now we have this HTML, so we're going to hit run to render it. Now this is what Android is going to see. It's going to see this rendered HTML. So now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go to a new HTML viewer. I'm going to paste this rendered HTML in here. Now I'm going to beautify that. And this, so this is what we're actually trying, going to be trying to parse. So it looks this looks um, this looks much better. Hopefully, now you see uh, it a little better, and you can really see that it's going to be difficult because the tags don't just open and close. 
what we would be able to get is if it was um, if it was like this information and then the a tags just closed but it's not the information is actually inside the a tags itself inside these href um, information right here that's what we're after so we're gonna have to make a custom method to get that information okay hopefully that makes sense um, it should make sense it'll make sense once we actually do it so let's go back to Android Studio. Okay, uh, before we get started, I actually need to fix something from the last tutorial. If you remember, this author parameter here was coming in as null, so we need to fix that. Let's go into entry, and we can see here that the author object isn't actually being declared properly, so this needs to be author, and that should work now. Let's uh, just change this, and change that and change that and that should be good okay let's rerun it and take a look okay now if we look down in the log we see that our author objects are coming through so that's good and I don't see anything else that's null so let's actually start writing code now so we'll close the entry and go to main activity and first of all we need to um, kind of take a look at what we're dealing with so we we really are only interested in the entries that's all really that I care about I just want like all this, all this information is not useful to me. I just want to get what's on inside these entries, and then we'll create card views out of what's inside these entries. And actually, the bulk of the data is inside of content. Um, the author objects will be easy to get, and the title objects will be easy to get, and updated will be, be easy to get. So I'm going to show you what I mean by easy to get. So let's go to, oops, go to the Reddit app, and now I'm just going to create a list of entries, and um, I'm going to print out. I'm going to get the author parameter, get the title parameter, and get the updated parameter, and just show you how easy they are actually to get. So we go body, and then get entries, and then we want to actually print that to the log. So let's comment this out and copy. So we'll go, actually, um, yeah, okay, we can print that out. Entries, and we'll just throw in this here. So we can see our entries. And then down below I will um, I'll get one of the authors, one of the titles, and one of the updated parameters. So we'll just go uh, log D and I'll just go author and we'll go uh, entries dot get. I'm just gonna get the first entry and then we can just actually call get author. It's that simple. And then we'll do another one for updated. So updated, get updated, and then one more for title. So title, get title. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. So if we look at the log, we have our list of entries just like before. But now I can see that I can print out the author object. I can print out updated and I can print out the title. Um, and if you remember, inside the author objects themselves, we have the URI to the uh, author's profile, and then we have the name of the author here. So if I just want the name of the author, I can just go get author, and do got get name, and that will actually just get the name of the author. So let's take a look at the log again, and there we go. So we have the name of the author. Um, we could also parse this further and get rid of the U if we wanted to. Uh, we can see when the post was updated and here is the title of the post. So you can see that it's going to be pretty easy to get those things. The hardest part, like I said, is going to be what's inside this content tag. Um, and I'm going to create a custom method for dealing with that. So let's actually get rid of, we can just comment all this out for now because we don't, we don't need that. So the method that I want to create, I want to make it as general as possible. I want to be able to actually pass it the tag that I want to filter and then have it filter whatever is inside that tag. So in other words, I want to be able to pass it this as a string. So I want to be able to pass it uh, a string, uh, call it s, and I want, and it could just be this right here. So I could do pass it this string, and then it would take um, it would take this and get this information right here. So that's that's what I'm trying to achieve with this. And the reason I want to make it as general as possible is because if we look at our code beautifier, there is a number of different tags. So we have a hrefs here, and we also have some images. So I want to be able, I want to be able to actually pass it this too. So if I go back to my notepad file, I want to be able to print, 
capacitance this also and then be able to get um, this link right here and that should be pretty much all we need for this because as you can see inside here all we have is the ahref and we're gonna want this because that's actually the link to the post itself of course we want the image because this is the thumbnail we need to get that this is just the post again down here and this is the user all right so let's go to Android studio and let's actually make this this custom um, method so I'll create a new class because that will be easier to organize it and I'll just call it extract XML and let's create a tag so private uh, whoops log t we're just gonna have two parameters in here so private string tag and private string uh, of the actual XML itself so we're, we're, we're gonna pass this method a tag and we're gonna pass it the XML and then we're gonna output the filtered XML that's that's what my plan is so I'm gonna pass it this tag as one parameter and I'm gonna pass it all of this as another parameter and then I'm gonna filter out this information right here alt insert the default constructor and grab both those and now I'm gonna since I'm gonna be So I don't know exactly how many of each tag are going to be in inside of each. Uh, what is it? I guess call each one of these tables. Um, in this case, we have one, two, three, four hrefs and one image. But that that doesn't have to be the case all the time. Like I don't know. It could be five hrefs. It could be six. It could be one. We don't know. So we're going to need to output a list basically because I don't know how many I'm going to actually get out of it every time. It could be different. So I'll create a list, public list string, and I'm just going to call it start because it's going to start to parse the data. And I'll create a list string, we'll call it result, and this is what we're going to be returning. So we'll go down to the bottom and just return result. And now we need to do some stuff. So to start off, we need to split up the XML. So we'll go split XML equals XML dot split and what we're going to be looking for is the tag and a quotation mark so to insert a quotation mark we just do that and then close it so what this is going to do is it'll take what we have here and it will split it here so to illustrate it will, if it's given this entire string right here what it's going to split it is it will create a string uh, well it'll create an array right here just like we're doing so split XML so I'll just go split XML Oops. is gonna be in this case it will be this so the first string will be that and the second part will be this so that's that's what it would split if this was the input so that's okay now I just need to um, basically get this right here so the next thing we're going to look for is another quotation mark because this this quotation mark won't be won't be shown it's going to take everything from here and forward to here so basically I just need to look for the next quotation mark and then take that information out oh and also note that we could we could get multiple tags right like I mentioned before we don't know how many of these ahrefs are actually going to be inside of the XML like I could I could have I could have three of them um, so I could have like this one would be like some other information I'll say yet some more information so if I'm if I'm splitting it it's gonna split it here well it'll split it right here and then it'll split it right there and then it'll split it right there so I'm actually gonna have much more than this so it'll actually end up being it'll end up looking something like this if I had three that's what it would look like well but of course this would be uh, some other information this would be some other information and then uh, yet some more information just like that so if, if if there was three that this is what it would look like so what I need to get I need to get all of it right I need to get this I need to get this 
and I need to get this right here. Okay, so let's go into here and we're gonna create another variable and I'm gonna call it count. And what count is going to be is the length of this XML string. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, pieces of information inside of split XML, then the length will be six. And the reason we need to do that is because we, like I said, we need to iterate through each one of these if there's more than one of these ahref tags. So we need to get, we need to make sure that we get all the information. So we'll just do a for loop. Actually, let's start at the uh, first index because we don't need to start at zero because we know zero is gonna be the tag itself. So there's no point in starting at zero. And we can do I plus plus. And then we create a temporary variable. So I'm gonna call it temp and it'll just be the index that we're currently at. So this is the one that we're gonna be working on. And now I wanna get the index, so the position of uh, this, this quotation mark right here. I know that we're gonna start from the beginning of what we're after, and the end of what we're after is gonna be this quotation mark. So in actuality though, it's gonna be a double quotation mark, not a single. I just have a single in the demonstration here. So basically we just need to find the index for where there's a double um, quotation mark. So I can go uh, integer index equals temp dot index of, and we can go get that index. So now this will output an integer, the position of that index where the quote, double quotation mark is. And now just for debugging, uh, we can print out the index in case it's not working properly. We'll have something to look at and now we can print out what was actually extracted. So the temporary variable itself, just also for debugging, just in case it doesn't work. And now I'm gonna select the substring. So if we go into here, um, I, I now have the index of this position and I know this starts at zero. So basically I just need to get the substring from zero up to the index. So I can just go temp.substring and go from zero, because we start from zero, and then go up to index, and that's it. And then let's actually log that so we can see what we snipped out. So I'll go snipped, oops, I don't know what I pressed there. And now we can print out temp again. So we can see what temp started as, what the index was, and then what we snipped out. So we have a very clear indication of what we're taking out here. And then we want to just append the result to our result array, our array list, sorry. So there we go, and what this, we can actually run this and we can take a look at it. That'll be, that'll be best, I think. What it essentially will do is it's gonna snip out all the information that we need and it's gonna log it as it goes so that I can, I can look at it as it goes and make sure it's doing it properly. So let's go back to main activity and let's actually run this and see what it looks like. So to start, we're just gonna do it on one of the entries just to test and I'll create a new XML object. So I'll call it extract XML equals new extract XML. And so we'll go entries dot get, we'll just get the first entry and then go get content because that's what we're actually gonna be uh, parsing. And then we need to pass the tag that we are interested in. So I don't know, we'll just do the ahref1 first. So that's all we need to do. And that should be good. And let's just go back into extract XML. And yep, see so we pass the tag first and then we pass the XML. So this is actually, this is actually backwards. Um, I can change it either way. This is gonna have to go over to here. So now we're passing the XML and the tag at the end. And then we just need to call this start method. So we can go uh, down here and go extract XML dot start. And that should be good. So now let's run it and then we can watch in the log and make sure that it's snipping out the correct information. Okay, so here we have uh, it's starting. So here's the end of our entries, and then here is where extract XML starts. So we have our first index, and we can see what it extracts. So it extracts the entire thing here, and then we see that it snips out this first part, and that's good. Let's test that link to make sure it works. So I clicked on the link there, and for some reason it opened up two tabs. I'm not sure why, but uh, the link definitely works. It came, brought me to the uh, Reddit post. So let's go back to our app. Let's take a look at the next one here. So we can see that it snips out. So we can see where, what it extracted and then it snipped out the piece that we needed. So let's take a look at this. Once again, it opened up two tabs. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but um, 
it took us successfully to where we wanted to go, so that's good. And now we'll check the actual Imgur post itself. Once again, two tabs. And that looks good. That's actually a really nice picture. And let's go back to the app. So one last test. Oh, I know why it did it. It's because I control clicked. That's So if I control click that, it opens up two tabs. Okay. Um, all right, so everything seems to be working good. We have our post, we have our um, user thread here we have the imgur post and this is the comment section or i guess that's just the post post twice so that's good everything looks uh, everything looks like it's working all right so now that we tried it on one single entry we actually are going to loop through every single entry so we'll create a for loop we'll go for uh, integer i uh, equals zero and we want i is less than entries dot size and i plus plus and we're going to stick this inside of our for loop and we're going to be extracting from the ahref tag but we're also going to be extracting from the image uh, from the image source tag so I don't know yeah so this this is the other tag that we're going to be looking for so we're actually going to call this extract xml1 extract xml1 and then I'll copy that and go down and I'm going to call this extract xml2 extract xml2 go image and src and these results are going to need to be saved. So let's create another list uh, of just strings. We'll call it post content since we are extracting from the content tag. And we're going to set that equal to our result. Because remember, we are returning a, uh, an array list here of results. So we can store that into a result here. For the image thumbnail, we're going to do something a little different because not every post is going to have a thumbnail. Some might have a null image. In, in that case, we're going to be wanting to show a default image. I'm um, just going to surround this in a try catch. And, uh, oops. and we're going to put a null pointer exception in here. And inside the try, we're, just going, to, we're going to go um, yeah, post content dot add. And we're going to try to add the extracted XML get zero. Um, the reason I'm putting zero here is because if we, oops, if we look, not there, if we look at our XML that we're dealing with, there's only gonna be one image source tag. Um, all the other ones are ahrefs or there'll be something else. The only, if, if there is a thumbnail, if a thumbnail does exist, it's only there's only gonna be one of them. So we only ever have to worry about the zeroth index because there's only ever going to be one of them. It's a little different when we're doing this because this there could be many ahrefs, but there's only ever going to be one image source. So that's why I'm putting this here. And uh, then we want to catch the null pointer exception. And if it happens to be null, we just want to do post content dot add. And I'm just going to add null. And uh, later on, I'll show you how we're going to handle this. But basically with the universal image loader, when it sees a null value for where it's expecting something, it's just going to put a default image. So that's where I'm going to insert the Reddit default image. And I'm also going to um, anticipate another error here. This is going to be an index out of bounds exception. And this is going to this this will this error will get thrown if that index position doesn't exist. So we, we could either have the null image or we could have the tag the tag didn't exist at all and that would throw a uh, index out of bound exception and then underneath we just want to do a little error handling so log e and this one's going to be a null pointer exception just like that and let's actually specify what it's from so i can go thumbnail that way i know if i see this error i know okay it was a null pointer exception from the thumbnail there was no thumbnail there in that case and then we just print out the message and I'm gonna copy this and I'll put it below here. And this one's gonna be uh, index out of bounds exception. And once again, I wanna say thumbnail, that way I know it was from the thumbnail. Okay, so I, I'm gonna run this and let's just make sure everything's working okay. All right, let's take a look at the log. You can see it looks like it's snipping everything. Like, it, oh, that wasn't actually the run, this one. So we have no crashes and everything looks okay. I don't, I don't even see any errors, which is great. So we look at this and we say, all right, Looks like no errors. Everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. So at this point, we'll assume everything's good and we can move forward. So I'm actually gonna end this video here. It's starting to get a little long. And the next part, I'm gonna figure out a way to organize the data. So 
because we're going to need to display it in card views, we basically need to get like a, a title, an author, updated, uh, the thumbnail, description, all that. And we're going to need to organize it into a separate object class so that it's easy to stick into cards. So that's what we're going to do in the next part. And there might even be one more tutorial after that to finish things off. If you like this Reddit tutorial so far and it helped you out, make sure to leave a like below. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.